So I woke up this morning to the following. At first, I dismissed this as just an April Fool's joke lingering around in my Facebook feed. I've seen enough of them. Ryanair buying Airbus A380s or Emirates buying 747s, but apparently not. So let's see if they've put any effort into this A380. I'll try and be somewhat positive as I was on the 737 review, despite me spending over 20 quid on something I didn't want nor can't afford. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Flight Sim Hub and welcome to our Braddock 3D A380 review. First and foremost, today is April the 5th 2024 and there's been a lot of rumours about the development of the fly-by-wire Airbus A380 for some time now. Their A320neo is probably one of the best add-ons for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and it's totally free of charge. I think we can all say we're pretty excited for Fly-by-Wire's A380 attempt, even if it is just freeware. Now, on the contrary, it would appear Product 3 d is looking to get in on some of the action, but they are not a free developer. Once again, the problem I immediately have with this plane, before I've even opened up the simulator, I just know that the default aircraft will have been cannibalised to drag this thing together. And at 20 British pounds or 26 dollars, that is not that cheap either. This particular aircraft comes with six liveries, Air France, British Airways, Qatar, Lufthansa, Thai and Etihad. To be honest, I gave the Brecord 3D 737 Max some credit with the outside model, but I'm struggling a little bit with this A380, primarily because the freeware A380 we currently have in the sim seems to have a better outside model. The interior of the freeware plane is just the default A320 cockpit, but it's still free, so who really cares? The Red 3D cockpit looks okay-ish, but it's certainly not an A380, uh, with a lot of the parts definitely cannibalised from the Azobo A320. Before I had this channel, I reviewed the Braddock 3D 737 Max, and I said if you really need a 737 Max in the sim, or even just a 737, this could be for you. Bear in mind at this time, the PMDG 737 hadn't yet been released. I could justify it back then. The difference with the A380 is the cockpit may look somewhat glamorous from a distance, but I bet the systems aren't that different from the default A320. The point is you can get a totally free model of the A380 with an A320 cockpit, so if you need an A380 for traffic generation or a video creation, just use that. Any hyper-realistic flight simmer won't be happy with the cockpit experience in the Braddock plane. Now I somewhat sympathise with developers. I'm not a flight sim developer, but obviously some work has gone into this and I could already see it getting totally ripped to shreds online. But then I remember, they've sold their 737 Max for about 20 quid for many years now. If just 10,000 people have bought that, that's over 200 grand in revenue. I imagine more than 10,000 people bought it as well, and half of them likely unsuspecting that this plane wasn't really worth it for their use. The A380 is on for around the same price, and I'm just trying to think for the developers for a second, but they've probably tapped into a gold mine with this. I cannot comment if this is just a cash grab or a genuine attempt to better the community, but I imagine towards the former, on the basis that Braddock 3D will have known the 3 A380 will be out soon. I can imagine if they started development before the fly-by-wire A380, they probably felt a little bit sad that they might be beaten to the mark. But it's a shame they haven't posted this plane up for £5 or something. If you're not a hyper-realistic simmer and love the idea of the biggest commercial plane in the sim, then why not? But at £20, I just can't recommend it with good faith. Okay, so it's time for the real-world flight test. We're going to go from Manchester in the UK, because uh, my frame rates will appreciate that. Um, I will have a look at the startup process in my own time, but um, from what I've read... Um, yeah, it's not great. It's just the default checklist. I'll go with British Airways. Weight and balance is a big one. Um, 1.2 million pounds. I have to Google that to see what that is. But anyway, you can see all the numbers on the screen. So if you fill it full, it said it was out of limits there, didn't it? But it's fine now. All right, well, we'll do a payload of 70% and we will fill the tanks to... Oh, they're both changing at the same time, aren't they? Yeah, so we'll do 50, 76, that's fine. Uh, oh, where are we? There we go, yeah. So we'll go there and we'll just leave the weather as clear skies, yeah. I keep clicking back. There we go. Set departure and we'll just click fly. Right, let's have a look. So they've, they've implemented the map here, which is... Ah, oh, you can move it, but that is from this menu here, I believe. Yes, it is. So they've implemented that. I don't know how it actually goes there on the real 380, but you can't move these or anything, you just drag around the map, so they've obviously just implemented that. Tiller commands, 
remove those. The joystick, all the way over here like this. I don't know what's going on with that. It, to me, that looks like it's killed it to the left side, but it's not. And I had to open joy.cpl earlier on to make sure my joystick wasn't broken. Um, in terms of the PFD, obviously that's from the default A320, as is the navigation display. Inoperative, inoperative, inoperative. Nav modes, they work. This has obviously been reskinned, but it does look like the same autopilot as in the A320, you can see from the buttons. Um, FMC. Uh, so they have actually put this down here. There's this, which I'm presumably the mouse in the A320, but I can't actually do anything with it. Let's go to the menu. Okay, we're there now. Flight plan directory. So this, I haven't done a flight plan in the sim, but this looks exactly like the A320, just in a slightly different resolution. Um, this is my first time in this aircraft, by the way, so if anything here is wrong, I will just make a pinned comment, but to me this just looks default. We do have four thrust levers, which is appreciated, and we have we have four engines here as well, which is nice. Something that uh, Captain Sim weren't able to do in, their, uh, in the first attempt of removing four engines for their 777. Auto brake, terrain on displays, gear up and down. There's a lot of inoperative things here. Squawk, so we can take this on that scene. I'll turn that off because I'll forget about it later on. Lighting. Try and crank that up. I wonder if it looks any better in the night time. Let's have a look. Not really. Am I, am I missing a switch there? I'll turn the footlights on. Not really. I mean, at least they've kind of got the colour to a degree on the panel. But I'll put that back to daytime. Um, the frame rate doesn't seem great, um, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I am recording, but I'm at Manchester. Uh, there's no Alan scenery going on. The A320 doesn't have these problems, so apologies for the frame rate there. Again, I don't know if that's the um, that's just something with my PC, um, but I don't normally have those issues. Uh, flaps, I will actually check. I'm going to retract the flaps for now. I'm going to move into the wing position in just a few seconds. We'll look at the views that have included. Overhead panel. Inoperative, inoperative, inoperative. So fuel pumps are available. Um, hydraulic pump controls are available. EIRs are unavailable. Uh, yeah, that's why IRS is unavailable. Flight control systems. There's just two available there. Inoperative, inoperative, inoperative. Inoperative, inoperative. Anti ice for all 400s are available, which is good. Landing lights are fine, obviously, from the opportunity. Cabin pressure, inoperative, inoperative. Recirculating fan switches are operative. There's the ELAX for the flight controls on the top right here. This is mostly inoperative systems, to be perfectly honest. It just looks like the ones from the A320 have been replicated and some of them duplicated. Um, yeah, you guys can make your own minds up on that, but it does appear that most of the buttons aren't operative. Now, I haven't even seen a proper payware 380 in a simulator before. The last 380 I remember coming out for a simulator was the Abacus A380 for Flight Simulator 10, which was hilarious. Um, I'll see if I can put some uh, screenshots on now of what that looked like, but I'm getting similar vibes, except that Microsoft Flight Simulator obviously looks a little bit better. The lag I'm getting is pretty crazy. I, that can't be from this add-on. You have to let me know if anyone else has seen that before, because my PC, I mean, it's only a 4060, but this is in 1080p resolution. Um, I will pause the recording and I'll turn the settings down slightly. Okay, I've turned some of the settings down now, so hopefully that's a little bit better. Moving outside, we've already had a good look round here from the start of this video. Let's have a look at what views are available to us from the camera section. So there's no virtual cabin on this aircraft, it's not necessarily a bad thing to be honest. Uh, let's have a look at these views. Okay, not great. We can see a great deal there, it looks like a cargo plane. They just torn these from the A320. Half of them are just inside the aircraft. That's not great, is it? Externals. Torn. Just from the standard aircraft. is fair enough. Um, well, I would like to. I'd like to have a look at the wing. And just have a look at the flap operation. Let's let's go to full flaps. <laughs> they move like hyper realistic speed. Slow down. No, that's okay. Is not like hitting the edge of the fuselage. Let me connect a controller. I would love to see what it looks like from the interior because I've seen a screenshot and someone complaining about it. So let me connect a controller. 
Okay, I've connected a controller now. Let's have a look. If we go to the showcase view, and then go to the camera drone, we can freely move around now. So we'll go through here. It's not as bad as they made out online. It's not great though, don't get me wrong. Mm, it's like low quality textures here. Now someone, something someone actually complained about was the uh, cockpit in this particular view. It's obviously sort of, yeah, it's like overwritten itself. Uh, but obviously this is just a camera drone view, so it's not really a, a major issue in my eyes. Okay, let's, uh, let's, let's pause the recording and we'll take flight and we'll see how it handles. Okay, let's uh, head into the cockpit. Now one thing that I'll, I'll give some credit for, the sounds, it does sound okay, to be perfectly honest. It, it sounds, I don't want to say if it's custom or not, but it does sound custom. I made that mistake in the video, the video about the 737. Uh, it's definitely custom sound pack, that. It, it, to be fair, actually, the, the high tone, it does just sound like the 747. I'd really have to compare them. There's V1 at 160 knots. I haven't done the rest of the V speeds, but... Positive right gear up. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure what I think to it. I mean, it definitely feels slower than an A320, which is a good thing. Although then again, the A320's got fly-by-wire as well, so... It... I'm just messing it around a little bit. Again, I mentioned at the start of the video, I don't have a baseline really to work towards with this aircraft. So in terms of how it flies, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know if it feels right, to be honest. It's probably not the worst thing in the world. What we'll do is we'll get set up for a landing. Now, I have seen on the forums that people have took this on flights across the pond already, even though it seemed to only come out... I have, first, I've seen it was this morning. Um, so people have already really used this aircraft quite heavily. So what I'll do is, I'll um, again, I'll stop the recording and I'll get set up for a landing and I'll make sure to set my recording software so you can see how I do in landing this aircraft for the first time in the sim. So it does have the call outs. I wonder if it'll have the, the A380, I'm pretty sure it's got the 80 call out. I'm not that confident that'll be included, to be perfectly honest. I'm not using the auto throttle here either, but. No, I didn't have it. Whoa, we're down. And uh, reverse is green on all four. And auto brakes in. There's 80 knots. And 60 knots. Stops rather quickly. That was just with, uh, I think, maximum auto brakes. Let's have a little review of that landing, see how we did. In terms of the ground hand handling that I mentioned earlier on, to be honest, it doesn't feel like it's doing it anymore. It's obviously a large aircraft to move around. To be honest, it, it feels okay now. I have seemed to have put this nav display here. I don't know if that, is that just a backup nav display in the real aircraft. I do need to take a look at an A380 cockpit actually. Anyway, the flight review. 
So funnily enough, I'm not an Airbus A380 pilot, but I feel that this aircraft isn't quite right. It has a slightly unusual turning circle during taxi, and during flight it just feels a little bit too light to be an A380. Again, I don't really have a baseline here, but if I had to guess, I'd say this isn't exactly top notch. The FMC imports flight plans directly from the simulator. You can of course still use something like Simbrief though to import the exported flight plan from Simbrief into the sim and then eventually into the aircraft. I found that most things in the cockpit can be pressed, but none of the complex systems from the A380 have been replicated, including the ECAM uh, and the very much complex mouse system on some of the displays. So I did have some fun taking off and landing, but the experience is ruined slightly knowing that this plane has been cobbled together and it isn't a true representation of the Airbus A380. Now I thought about taking this thing on that sim for a good laugh. Uh, it seems it does import the flight plan, it's probably doable, um, and I doubt there's going to be any other A380s on the network at this time. Um, I can imagine the week the fly-by-wire A380 release is going to be absolutely chaotic at Gatwick, that's for sure. Uh, the plane doesn't get the best exterior model, uh, it's got a small number of liveries, it's got an okay-ish looking cockpit but a lot of cannibalised Azobo systems from their A320neo, and it's come at a time where a free alternative that looks miles above what this could be around the corner. An A380 model with a decent exterior already exists as well, so for that reason I cannot recommend this product. As mentioned, the developers have probably put some work in to get this thing together, but it doesn't mean it's fair to charge £20 for the pleasure. If there are any potential updates to the aircraft, I'll make another video on it, but at the moment I'm in two minds whether I should try and refund it. I'm busy flying as a passenger on a 737 in a couple of weeks, and that 20 quid I spent today would have bought me a bottle of water from Ryanair, so I'm going to have to make that decision. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and a comment below uh, on your thoughts on this particular aircraft, and we'll see what comes in the coming weeks as far as updates go. We'll see you in the next one.